Hello and welcome to the Philippines. I regularly get people commenting on uh, building types here in the Philippines and construction. And I'm going to comment a little bit about that. Uh, did a little research. I'm also going to try to keep this uh, conversation uh, relative to the part, rest of the world as well. Uh, as there are different risks in different parts of the world, different building standards. And uh, I think you're going to be surprised by some of the information I will reveal here shortly. There are not only the natural risks, uh, earthquakes, typhoons, hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, landslides, and more. But there's also the risk that the building may not have been designed properly and may not be structurally sound. Uh, Contractors may have taken shortcuts, uh, which have reduced its uh, structural integrity. This is a huge tower in downtown San Francisco, I believe, the Millennium Tower, 58-story, and it is leaning and sinking, creating a major issue, obviously. People are moving out. They can't sell their units. There are already many lawsuits and lots of finger-pointing, and uh, I've I believe that they did not go down to uh, bedrock in this particular instance, and they had uh, reasons why the engineers uh, decided that wasn't necessary. Not to be outdone, Opal Towers, Sydney, Australia. Uh, Australians already know most of this. It's been in the news. Uh, it's the tip of the iceberg. Apparently, they haven't been monitoring and regulating the building industry for quite a few years. And there's been a big push to uh, put the buildings up as fast as possible, probably taking shortcuts. 60 Minutes Australia has a YouTube channel, and they've done a couple of interesting pieces about this and other property issues in the Philippines. Opal Tower residents had to uh, evacuate in the middle of the night, I think uh, about Christmas time. Uh, because loud bangs were heard, apparently cracks in the building, and they were afraid that the towers might collapse, the tower might collapse. And this was the notice that uh, some of them received. Uh, my understanding is that the, uh, the crews that went in to evacuate people actually had to bust down some doors because of the shifting floors, shifting doors, there, therefore they couldn't open normally. And this is a very new building. I think uh, some of the units going for over a million Australian dollars. Now, the good news is that there is a lot of science that goes into building, everything from, from houses to commercial buildings and skyscrapers. Uh, materials have been tested. Materials are regularly tested for their, for their strength and flexibility under an amazing number of conditions. There are building codes and accepted standards in many nations. Many parts of nations might even have their own local codes. New materials come online, old materials change. For instance, 2x4 from uh, 40, 50 years ago is no longer 2x4. It's been cut down. They've done tests and determined that it's strong enough, being less than that dimension. Another good point is that most buildings do not fall down, regardless of uh, poor design, uh, poor materials, or poor construction. This case of an apartment building in China, it looks like uh, the, it had an issue with the foundation, and it just fell over, still intact, apparently. And uh, most buildings stay up unless they are hit by uh, some extreme weather, earthquake, winds, whatever. Now for the bad news. Design and construction of buildings is not an absolute perfect science. Uh, we do a lot of things uh, based on the fact that we've done it before and it works. Uh, I managed a scaffold company back in the 80s uh, in Phoenix and uh, I had my engineer tell me that we can prove mathematically that this stuff should fall down. But we know from experience that it stays up. So that's how we base our designs. I had an experience there uh, where our company did half of the forming and shoring. We put the, the supports up to pour the concrete floors and walls. We did half of a commercial building. The much more experienced 
experts in that industry did the other half of the building. And I think about the third floor up, their side collapsed and ours stayed up. Fortunately, no one was killed or injured. Now a little bit about the Philippines. Almost everything in the Philippines is made out of concrete, block or poured or precast uh, panels, unless you're building a Nipa hut out of uh, more natural materials. I'm going to mention a few things that I have observed and uh, experienced in my three and a half years plus here in the Philippines, living in four different condo units. First of all, there is a shortage of skilled construction workers. Uh, very well known fact, uh, many of the skilled workers go overseas where they can make much more money. And uh, there is a, an effort to train uh, tens of thousands of construction workers, but that's going to take time. If you're in the province, it will be much more difficult to find uh, the skilled workers. You can find workers. Uh, one story that I've heard many, many times is that, uh, you know, you're, you come from a different country. You're used to things being done differently. You tell them the way you want it done, and they shake their head yes. And, but as soon as you leave, they go back to doing it the way that they know how to do it. This lack of skilled labor is also uh, delaying many of the infrastructure projects going on all around the country. The quality of material should be a concern to anybody building anywhere in the world, and uh, it's different here. Different materials, different suppliers, different manufacturers. Uh, many things, hollow blocks are often made locally, and uh, you want to make sure that uh, they're using the proper amount of cement to create those blocks. Uh, somebody might try to skimp and get more bricks per bag of cement. Newer and better products have been coming online for a number of years, and this is an example. I came across this in my walk. Uh, these bricks here that uh, are specially formed to fit uh, into each other, and uh, the man was telling me that he could build a wall much cheaper per square meter than using the standard hollow blocks. These actually had uh, fiber in the cement, so they were fiber reinforced and lighter blocks than what you'd usually use also. If you were outside of the major cities, it could be uh, cost prohibitive to try to acquire something like this because of the shipping costs involved. Here's an example of uh, something I've seen in uh, all four condominiums that I've lived in is that the uh, as the buildings settle, tiles start coming up and it's created by a number of reasons, obviously from the settling. Uh, I think, and I've talked to contractors, and there is uh, more flexible uh, cement and grouting available. And I think if they would use the more flexible materials underneath, uh, I think that would help alleviate that problem. But every condominium I've been in, also the, all the tiles in the floors, uh, the, the grouting between the tiles and the cement under start coming loose and the tiles start coming up uh, relatively quickly. And here's another example of the grouting between tiles. And then what I found is uh, I had, uh, instead of the ants crawling above the tile, there was a whole colony of ants uh, had their own houses underneath the tiles. Uh, so that all had to be replaced. Now my landlord at this particular place uh, purchased the cheapest material, patch material she could find. And uh, she was going to hire some relatively inexperienced person to come up and try to fix this, repair it. And some people just don't understand the reason. And I tried to explain to her, you know, there are there there's more flexible, better materials to use that will last a lot longer. And uh, therefore, and also try to get a person who actually knows what they're doing, so they do a proper job. But sometimes there is resistance against that, and uh, the cheapest option always seems to be the... Most buildings in the Philippines uh, do not have insulation applied. And when I ask about that, most people I talk to, including many real estate agents, aren't familiar with what I'm talking about. They don't, they've never heard of insulation, and I have to describe it. Uh, I talked to an engineer uh, from, I think it was Hong Kong land, building Mandani Bay, 
and he told me he thought insulation was only important in cold climates. Uh, before I moved here, I remember reading an article in the, one of the Philippine papers online, and uh, the government was asking for suggestions on ways to cut back on electric usage because uh, if with, with a growing economy, we're using more electricity, we need more power plants. If we can reduce, become much more efficient with electrical usage, uh, we, we can get by with building fewer power plants. Well, insulation would be the best place to start, I think. Concrete and concrete block can be a relatively good insulator, but what happens, especially if you have direct sunlight during the day, is that uh, that block heats up slowly over the day and gives it off all night long. Uh, my first condo, even at 10, 11 o'clock at night, my concrete wall would be uh, very, very warm, giving off that heat, even though uh, the, the direct sunlight stopped at about noon every day. About the only insulation type materials I've found in, uh, for instance, hardware stores is the bubble wrap with foil on one side or both sides, and uh, that will do a reasonably good job. Uh, surprisingly. I've used some, I've supplied some to a couple of other people who have put it in their on their ceiling area and they've been amazed at how much cooler their uh, little boarding house was after that. If you are going to buy, build, or rent, I strongly suggest, uh, especially if you're going to rent long term, that uh, you consider uh, using some type of insulating material to cut down on your electrical costs. The electricity in the Philippines and much of the world, for that matter, is 220 volt uh, versus 110 in the USA. That's not a problem in most cases, as as your phone charge, most phone chargers, most laptop and uh, other electrical device chargers operate on dual currencies. So you should look at that plug, and it should have a a, a notice on it someplace telling you that it's. Uh, 110 up to 220 volt capable. Uh, very few electrical outlets here are grounded and uh, you'll find that uh, you may be getting shocked especially if you're walking around plugging things in or touching things with wet hands. Uh, the current condo I live in is about one year old. It is grounded and the electrical outlets are grounded. Uh, all the previous condos I've lived in had that third plug, but I was told that uh, they weren't hooked up. They were not grounded outlets, so that can be an issue. If you bring uh, blenders, power tools, that type of thing from the USA, you're going to have an issue unless you have a, a step-down uh, transformer, I guess it's called, and uh, that can be large and very expensive. Uh, to use, so you're just better off buying tools here in the Philippines or other 220 countries. Noise can be an issue even inside the buildings. Uh, any place air comes in, noise will come in. Will co also come in, obviously, through doors, under doors, around uh, the edges of windows, gaps in windows, and uh, through structures as well, even concrete walls wooden walls, uh, sheetrock walls, uh, as you all have all experienced. Noise is a universal problem around the world, and uh, I've done two other videos called Got Noise, uh, about noise, as I was in the noise control business for a number of years in the USA. So I am an expert. Uh, but anyway, you can check out those uh, channels. There are some things uh, that you can do for noise and lots of information online. Uh, I often just use white noise. At night I run a fan that makes enough noise to help drown out the dogs and the motorbikes and the roosters and the children. I think the last item I'm going to cover is plumbing. Uh, you're used to things operating a certain way. You're used to your toilets, your faucets working a certain way, where whatever part of the world you live in. Well, it's different in many other parts of the world. That's just a fact, and that includes the Philippines. There again, I think uh, a number of issues. I think the 
quality of the materials used and some of the workmanship. Uh, I've had more issues with plumbing in the Philippines in a couple of years than I've had in my lifetime in the USA. And part of it is due to the quality of the water as well. The, the water here is very heavily calcified and it, it plugs up the, uh, the filters regularly. I've had maintenance up here changing, uh, changing valves and uh, connections. Uh, this year was only a year, almost exactly a year old when it went bad. Uh, the other day it went out into the hall, there was water coming down the hallway. Somebody else's uh, valve was leaking. A year later, uh, my neighbor next door, same thing happened exactly a year later. I think this developer uh, purchased the less expensive fittings. Uh, didn't have as much trouble in my first three condos I lived in, uh, but we did have some issues. I had a major uh, pipeline in the hallway, a water pipeline bust in the middle of the night twice. Didn't flood my place, but it flooded my neighbor's place. And uh, from the corrosion, I was told by the maintenance people, I've had maintenance come up and repair leaks a couple of times, uh, this one in particular, and there again it goes back to the the training of the personnel, the maintenance people, did their best uh, to, to, to fix it, but they couldn't, and uh, finally they sent up an actual plumber, somebody with the training and the experience, and uh, he was able to stop the leak here. I love the Philippines and it's a great place to visit or even to uh, retire here. And the people are extremely friendly, uh, but understand things are done a little bit differently. Materials, uh, suppliers, and uh, many of the customs are different than what you're used to. Uh, so you do need to adapt a bit. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like the video. Please share the video. Please subscribe. Safe travels to you all wherever you're at, and we'll see you next time.